Today, I wanna to walk you through five portrait editing tips that you can use when you're editing your portraits inside of Lightroom. I find that when editing portraits, it can be a little bit tricky to get them right. However, if you implement these five editing tips the next time you're inside a Lightroom, I promise that you'll be coming away with way better results. So without further ado, let's dive into Lightroom and let's get this video started. Portrait editing tip number one, we have got white balance and using it correctly. White balance is super, super important when you're editing portraits because it controls your subject's skin tone so, so much. So how should you be approaching white balance when editing portraits? I find that when I'm adjusting white balance in a portrait shot, just like this one here, I wanna make sure that I'm only looking at my subject's skin tone and that is it. For example, we're having a look at our subject's skin, his face right here, and things look good, but it's probably a little bit purple and maybe just a touch cool, just a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make my way over to the basic panel here and I'm gonna increase the temperature just a little bit and I'm also going to reduce the tint just a touch as well. Now this can take a little bit of time to get right back and forward on a couple of sliders, but make sure you take the time to get it right because this is gonna set the foundation for your edit. So I would say looking at our shot now, our subject skin tone is pretty much perfect. It's not too warm, it's not too cool, it's not too green, it's not too purple. We've nailed it, which is great. But the rest of the image feels pretty warm and I much preferred the cooler look we had before. But when it comes to editing portraits and when it comes to getting your skin tones right, your subject and their skin tone should be the only priority when it comes to setting the white balance in a portrait shot, especially like this when our subject is so close to the camera. If you keep this in mind the next time you're editing portraits, I almost guarantee you that you'll be coming away with better skin tones. Portrait editing tip number two, we wanna pretty much replicate editing tip number one and do exactly the same thing for the exposure. So making our way back into the basic panel here, if I have a look at our, at our subject here, he's a little bit on the darker side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over to our shadows, I'm gonna increase the shadows a little bit and I might also look at increasing the exposure just a touch and maybe reducing the highlights a little bit. And once again, our subject now is more or less perfectly exposed, but the rest of the image is a little bit bright. Even right here on our subject's hoodie, it's a little bit blown out, but that's nothing to worry about. All we've got to do is add a brush mask later, go in and then correct that, but making sure that our subject is looking perfectly exposed should once again be our number one priority when it comes to adjusting the exposure values. Don't worry about optimizing for a perfectly balanced image here. We'll be able to bring all of this back in later down the track when we are editing with different tools. For now, all we wanna do is focus on our subject and make sure in this situation, he is looking perfect. Portrait editing tip number three, we have got masking. I know I kind of hinted at that before in tip number two, but masking is gonna be a huge part of our workflow. So let's dive in nice and early because I find that when you can set all the masks early on in your edit, it gives you an even stronger base to work with when you're applying your style, your colors, and your looks later on. There are three masks I add to every single one of my portraits. One is to soften our subject's skin. The next is to add a vignette to our image to make sure that we are completely focused in on our subject. And finally, I always mask my subject's eyes out to make them stand out a little bit more. So let me show you exactly what that would look like. Let's first start off with softening our subject's skin. What we're gonna do is open up our masking tab here and then we are gonna select our person in our shot. We are going to select facial skin and body skin, except it's selected a little bit of his, uh, of his glove here. So let's create that mask and then let's subtract from this mask with a brush we can turn auto mask off and let's remove this glove part right here and his arm. That's not really of importance at the moment. Then I'm gonna press O, which will hide the mask overlay, that red mask overlay. And then we can come down here to effects and we're gonna drop the clarity a touch and we're also gonna drop texture a little bit. This just helps flatter our subject's skin a little bit. And if you are working with clients and you're shooting portraits of them, I guarantee you that they will love you for doing this. So that is mask number one out of the way. The next mask we are gonna add is our vignette. Now you can do this within the effects tab, but 
you don't get as much control and that's why I much prefer doing it this way. We are gonna shape this vignette pretty much perfectly around our subject to make sure that we are absolutely nailing it to make sure we are getting it just right. I'd say that's looking pretty good. What we are now gonna do is make our way over to this little button right here on the right hand side, click invert, which now is going to allow us to edit the outside of the mask, not the inside of our radial filter. And then we can come down to the exposure slider here and we're just gonna look at decreasing the exposure. Now I would say things are probably a little bit wide, so I can just come in here and adjust this a little bit further. We wanna always make sure that we've got a little bit of padding around our subject, but I would say, just like that, quick before and after, that mask is a game changer and it draws so much attention to our subject. And then last but not least, we are going to come back to select people and then we are gonna select person one and we are gonna go down to uh, eye scrella and pupils where, oh, iris and pupils, there we go. I have no idea if I pronounce the word scrella right. I don't think I've ever used that word. Anyway, let's hit create mask and then we are once again going to press O to hide that overlay and then we're gonna zoom in on our subject here just like that. And then we are simply just gonna increase the exposure a little bit. I find that with the eyes, it's very, very touch and go. And then in this case, as the white part of our subject's eyes are quite yellow or the scrella, uh, we can come down here and just turn the saturation down a touch, just a little bit. That's all that is necessary. And then just like that, a before and after, you can see that our subject's eyes, oh, actually, I think they're standing out a little bit too much here. If we come back to the exposure, let's drop this back quite significantly. Like I said, it's very touch and go. You definitely don't need too much here. Let's now continue on to tip number four, which is leaning into the colors you already have in your image instead of trying to go for a crazy edit. So if I'm having a look at the colors in our shot, we've got a lot of green, we've got a lot of yellow, we have a little bit of red, and we also obviously have orange, which is our subject's skin tone. So I don't wanna change the orange as I've already nailed that in my white balance workflow. The red is really small, so I'm not really gonna worry about that. And there aren't too many other colors going on. So I'm only gonna be playing with yellow and green. I'm not gonna try and turn the greens into some, you know, gray looking moody vibe. I'm gonna just lean into exactly how they already look in the shot as I like the way they look. And I'm just gonna make some simple adjustments to help our subject stand out a little bit more. Let's jump into our color mixer tab and we are gonna pick up our green slider here. We're gonna move these over to the aqua side a little bit more and we're gonna do the same thing with our yellows as well. This just adds a little bit more intensity on to those colors. But with that being said, we're now gonna turn back that intensity in the saturation tab by just reducing the yellow and green saturation sliders just a little bit. Nothing too crazy, just backing them off a touch. And then we can come into the luminance tab. We can reduce the green luminance and reduce the yellow luminance, which is the brightness of our color. And then just like that, only changing six sliders, we can help our subject stand out more from the image, feel like we're cleaning up the image just a little bit, at least in this situation, it's like that. And we can go from this to this. I much prefer this green tone versus the warmer green tone we had before. Keeping the colors true to life and accurate in your portraits is super important. And a really easy way to do that, it's to not go crazy with a huge workflow. Otherwise you might end up with people's skin tones looking gray or really overcooked and borderline radioactive. Not ideal. Tip number five, let's talk about removing distractions. Especially in this shot here, I would say we don't have too many distractions to remove, but there are tiny little things that I wanna remove that I know will make a genuine good impact to this shot, make things less distracting, and of course, once again, sound like a broken record at this point, help our subject stand out more from the shot. So we're gonna be using two tools. We're gonna to be using the masking tool and we're also gonna be using the remove tool with generative AI enabled as it is so, so nice to use. Okay, so let's first think about masking. The first thing I wanna do is come to this leaf in the top left-hand corner. I find it a little bit too bright and a little bit too intense. So what I'm gonna do is add a radial gradient over the top of it gonna reduce the exposure a little bit and reduce the saturation a touch. Cool, it now looks a little bit more dulled and killed off. I'm happy with how it looks. Now let's open up our, uh, our remove tool here and zoom in on our subject. Now you can see there is a tiny little white dot on our subject's lip, not ideal. So we're gonna remove that. I wanna make sure that 
use generative AI is enabled. So I'm gonna make my uh, brush a little bit bigger than that dot. I'm just gonna click it. Now the cool thing with the remove tool in Lightroom is you can stack multiple removes in the same AI generation thing, if that makes sense. I'll, I'll show you what I mean. So for example, we don't have to just click his lip and then generate the remove and then do it again. We can add multiple on the same one. So what I'm gonna do is also remove these white dots in the background. I don't particularly like how they look, especially this one up here in the corner. And then we've got some leaves behind our subject's head, which just look a little bit too distracting for my liking. So I'm gonna remove them, give it a little bit of a buffer. I don't wanna to select too much of our subject's hoodie. And then we're also gonna do the same thing down here with, uh, with this part of this leaf as well. We can color all of that in. Okay, cool. So with all of that selected, I can now just hit remove. And now I get to sit back, let the AI wizards inside of Lightroom work their magic and hopefully it nails at first go. Of course, we can always go through and have a look at the different options that Lightroom gives us, but uh, usually Lightroom nails at first go. And there we go. Just like that, it is that easy. We can cycle through here and really nothing much is changing, is it? The main one I wanna have a look at is our subject's lip. Okay, it's removed a little bit of his mustache, but it's not really going to, uh, to affect too much. But now we've removed those leaves behind our subject's head. We've removed that white dot in the top corner and the, the other few white dots we had. And of course, we've also then gone in and killed off this leaf in the top left-hand corner. I would say this image is looking good. And there we go, that is gonna wrap up today's video. This portrait is definitely far from finished. This is the actual finished result I would have gone with. I love this photo, it's one of my favorite photos I shot on my recent trip to central Java, but they are my top five Lightroom editing portrait tips that hopefully you can now go and implement into your workflow and get better results the next time you're editing. If you want to go and continue learning about photography, photo editing, video and video editing, you can go and check out this video right here and I'll see you over there.